What is up guys, it's Dr. Sammy, and today I wanna to review how I place the rubber damp. So the rubber dam is an awesome tool used in dentistry to protect the back of the throat and maintain isolation for procedures that require bonding. I personally try to use this tool every day as I find that it makes my work more predictable and enjoyable. However, I have found that most dentists avoid using the rubber dam because of how difficult it can be to place in the mouth. In this video, I plan on sharing some tips I use every day to make rubber dam application more simple and convenient for any patient. So let's jump right into it. 95% of my cases involves three basic setups. And the first setup I wanna talk about revolves around the upper posterior teeth. I always clamp the molars when working on the posterior quadrants because it gives me more room to maneuver my drill when working. Personally, I prefer a clamp with serrations to be able to comfortably grip the teeth with variations in anatomy, while the wings help give me slightly more attraction when working. I then create a custom rubber dam template the prefabricated templates are incredibly helpful, but I find that they don't work as well with those teeth that aren't aligned in a perfect arch. I start this process by attaching the rubber dam to the frame. This allows me to stretch the rubber dam while my assistant marks the teeth. This is done after giving local anesthesia so that our patients have some time to get profoundly numb. All we have to do now is deliver the clamp to the tooth and place the rubber dam on. When placing the clamp, I make sure to slowly maneuver over the height of contour and to be extra careful of the gums. Patients will feel no pain if the clamp is placed entirely over the tooth surface. After placing the clamp, I make sure it is stable and in the correct position. The floss gives me the ability to retrieve the clamp at any time. As you can see here, there is no bleeding, the clamp is very stable, and the patient is comfortable. I prefer to start with anterior teeth and work my way towards the back one tooth at a time. I find that this technique makes this process more predictable and secure. If I get caught up on any tooth, my assistant helps with floss to lock it into place. Once the dam is secure, I use a flat instrument to help invert the rubber dam and prevent any salivary leakage. As you can see, we have achieved an awesome barrier that helps protect the throat and isolate the teeth. All right, so isolating the upper anterior teeth is actually a little bit easier. We have the same setup as before, but typically I don't need to use any clamps. Instead, I cut the edges of the rubber dam and use those pieces to wedge the rubber dam into place. This will definitely help secure the rubber dam, but if you have teeth with gaps in between, you may need a premolar clamp for that extra stability. If the decay extends under the gums, I use floss ligation to retract the rubber dam further cervically. This exposes the entire tooth so that I can visualize those hard to reach areas. My last setup involves the lower posterior quadrant and it follows the same exact protocol as the upper posteriors. However, I use a different clamp which I find fits comfortably over most molars. As you can see, the rubber dam fits snugly on each tooth and has no leakage whatsoever. Well, I hope this video helps those of you out there that are struggling to put the rubber dam on. With a little bit of practice, the rubber dam should slip on with ease. If y'all have any questions or video ideas, please leave it down in the comment section below. And if you like the content, please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you for the next one. Thank you.